We find hammer stones to make to hit the rocks to uh, to make their tools. We call that flint napping, by the way. Um, the cores are the big pieces that they started with that they hit the chips off with. So just an example of graphs. So this is in that report. Um, we looked at where it was coming from uh, below the surface. So this is zero to ten, just under the surface. So you can tell most of our material was coming out between twenty and forty centimeters below the surface, and that actually happens to be right under that plow zone it's in that air. It's about that depth. Um, which was probably about the living surface out there. Um, and then I'll just have, you know, how many of the pieces actually had a piece of like the rind or the cortex of the cobble and um, <clears throat> the counts. Um, and then we put this all together, and that's just showing you locus one, and then all the artifact counts, and we also made density graphs of where the highest density of artifacts came from and where the you know the activity areas were of the site. And then also the features. I mentioned we found 43 features out here. And this is a, a another one of these charcoal pits. And you can tell how deep this is at a meter below the surface, or about three feet. And even though we didn't see this up here, it likely started, this pit probably started up around this area. You can just barely see the outline, but it's not a lot of times until you really clean off your wall and you're looking at it that you can see it. So um, why they dug a pit that deep to make this fire is still kind of, um, well, it's a question that we have, but we did get dates. We were able to date the charcoal and it dated to about 4,500 years ago to the late archaic. And that we opened up, because we found half of this feature here, we opened up a unit, this one, so we could see the whole thing. This is this half, and when we opened it up, we found the other half, and we found another one. So um, we have uh, so we have the late archaic dates, and we also got charcoal from there, the large pieces that we were able to analyze, that Aaron actually analyzed, of red oak and white oak um, that was probably used for um, well, the, the fire is definitely processing the acorns. Um, they're made of processed oil of acorns, and it's good wood to burn. Um, <clears throat> and then, we, of course, we map in and we draw pictures of um, uh, all of the features. And then we, when we cut them in half, we draw the pro we bisect them and draw a profile, so we can actually see the shape of the pit. And there's another one. This is the one that I don't know if you can see it. That well, but this was a very, very bright red uh, stain. And buried, and with red ochre, you may just find that whatever tools, stone tools were with them, and the red in the sand, uh, but not the actual person, because they would have um, gone back to the earth and then just left the stain in the soil. So we were, when we saw this, as Pat said, everybody was like, oh, the cures are very red, do we have a burial here? But we never did find any of the, um, we didn't find any bone. It may have been a ceremonial pit. Um, we did get a date back, it also dated to the late archaic. Um, but we opened up larger units around it. As you can see, we would always open up um, to follow features. And we took like, many soil samples. I do have a picture of the pit. Um, and we collect soil samples to look for all those microliths or any little bits of charcoal or bone that we may have missed. And we put it through a system we have back at the lab, this machine called the Float Tech 2000. But it's a, a it, it floats anything in the soil will float to the top, like, a, like little seeds or bone. And, um, and then you have a light fraction and a heavy fraction, and then you analyze it, and you may find all sorts of things that you couldn't see with the naked eye. And that's how we get a lot of our seeds, which then will give us information about seasonality. And we found different seeds at the, in these soil samples that um, led us to believe that the site was occupied from uh, late spring to early uh, fall. And it was most likely not a winter encampment, but based on the types of seeds that we found, um, and when they are available, that it's likely that that's when the site was occupied.
Um, and the seeds, of course, are charred. They're burned, and that's why they've survived. Are they similar to the seeds of those species that we see nowadays? Some are, like for instance, goosefoot is actually kinopodium, and you see that growing along the sides of roads everywhere. Some is, most of this you, you certainly would still find today, but some were indigenous plants that are here. I mean, these are, and, and the kinopodium we find is a, um, back 6,000 years ago. People were starting to really collect it, and maybe even process it. They weren't farming, for, but, per se, but they were were there variances as the centuries passed? Certainly as things became domesticated, you can see. And oh. then there were variances as well. And then as things become domesticated, the seeds get larger, and you know, there's all sorts of changes that you can see. Um, these are, I don't know how well you can see these, but uh, these are some of this, the, the pit features, the profiles. And this was, um, this is what ended up being the pit feature that that red, uh, the red soil came was in. No, no, this is it. Sorry. And then we have, you can see where the red was. Um, we found several very large pit features um, out at out there, and we have um, they date to either the um, middle woodland or the later pit. And we believe that parts of them, some can be, some may have been ceremonial pits, like the one with the very red earth, and others could have been parts of subterranean house structures. Very similar pits have been found. That's a, uh, just to show you, a, that's our normal soil profile. And then we have, and you can see, here's our plow zone. But can you see this? This is a, this is a very large pit. And that's our two by two meters. So this is a large pit that actually was probably this big, because it's in this wall, and it's in this wall, and you can see it on the floor of the unit. Um, and similar pits have been found in Connecticut recently, on a site that a colleague is working on near the Mashantuck and Pequot Museum. And uh, we're trying to figure out what really they're used for. If I put a plug into that museum, huh? I want to plug the museum over there. Really the Mashantuck and Pequot Museum in Connecticut is is excellent. It's it is. very, very good. It has the whole history of uh, from glacial times all the way up to modern day. Very today. visual. Yeah. All the kids go there. And just to, just to show you how deep that pit is, um, that I'm standing, I'm not even at the bottom of it, and, but it's all white because it was frozen. We were <laughs> we're out there. It was starting to get cold, and I think that's first thing in the morning, and things were still really frosty. Um, but, and here's our drawing yeah. of it, but you can tell there were several episodes of dumping or digging out and filling back in of this pit. And we had two radiocarbon dates, and one was from the middle woodland, and it was up in this area. And this is 2,000 to 1,000 years old. This is the middle woodland. And the other was from the late archaic, which is about four, and it was about 5,000 years old. So it was used at two different times, at least. And he, these are just an example of our radiocarbon dates. This is, we send all our charcoal to a lab in Florida called Beta, Beta Analytic. And so this is, they give them all a number, but these are all our dates. So this is 4,500, 45, 40 years ago, plus or minus 60. There's always a little standard deviation um, that you can't quite get to, but there's, um, you know, those are the time periods and that we have, which which go along with all our artifacts that we found as well. So in the end, we had our different, our loci, we had, so locus one, um, we found was middle archaic, to, and then we had the one middle woodland point here. Over here, we had middle and late archaic. Most of them we had Middle and late archaic. I have early woodland here because we did get one early woodland date as well. And this is where the big pit features are, right here, which hasn't yet been developed, this area, I don't think. Um, and then we had late archaic. So the most intense late archaic and then middle and late archaic. The most intense occupation out of JT Berry was people were mostly there between about 5,000 years ago and 3,000 years ago. And maybe it was optimum 
um, the resources were optimum, the, the, the temperature, uh, the types of um, the you know, resources that were available. But basically, we're saying that it was a, um, a short-term campsite that was being used over and over again. We didn't really, 43 features is a lot, but there's, um, I, think that the, I think that the main part of the site was where the buildings are. And they may have been destroyed when all those buildings were put in, the, the old hospital buildings, because that was the flattest, highest part mm -hmm. of the site. Also over in Vance, um, the, the, the gravel pit across the road was also a major site. Do you so, think that they traveled? They didn't stay permanently there. No, they, and in they, fact, they, what um, there was still the environment was still changing um, during the Middle Archaic. This is just a few uh, characteristics of the time periods when the site was used. But during the Middle Archaic, environment's changing, and people are just seasonally going to places and coming back to places. So. Maybe in the winter they may have actually moved closer to the shore, and um, and then came back inland into these waterways uh, to resources during the late spring and to, to late fall. But uh, the water, t so at one part when JT Berry is being used during the middle archaic period, uh, the ocean was still 30 feet lower than it is today, um, and then uh, there was still a lot of migrating. Uh, birds, but as I said, there was a developed forest, and so people had a lot of plant materials and nuts and uh, different kinds of uh, subsistence, you know, to, to take advantage of. And we find a lot of woodworking tools start coming out at this time. Um, it be more partly because of the forest, and uh, that just shows you that how this was. The, where the water level was, uh, this is where the land was 16,000 years ago, and here's 12,000 years ago. It still went out almost to George's Bank, and we're getting out there. And, um, and then it eventually, about 5,000, 6,000 years ago, it stabilized. Do you think that they today. traveled and came back, like they came back yes. to the same place again? Yes, yeah, oh, we I do see. think seasonally they... They did come back to the same places, <laughs> probably living in structures such as this, a V2. They are, uh, this is a reconstructed one out, out, out of Martha's Vineyard on the Aquina, Wampanoag Aquina Reservation. But very simple structures. And we have found post molds. We didn't find them at JT Berry, but uh, they're hard to find because they, they disappear quite um, quickly. But you do find the little stains for where posts may have been for structures. They moved in groups of how many? Um, probably family groups of um, anywhere from some of the sites where we have found post molds where we can figure out how many structures there may have been. It seems to be about, at the, during the Middle Archaic, about 20 or so people to a group. Huh. And, but they would be dispersed and come together at different time periods. And then, um, but that is just a guess, too. It's very hard in this time period to, to predict population. But collecting a lot of acorns, processing, we do find charred acorns and different other resources. Did you I find I animal walking trails in Paris now? I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I heard that a long time ago. Yeah. Fishing, uh, lots of fishing taking place still. This is from the Merrimack River, but um, where lots of big sites have been found with fishing evidence. Did, did you find any evidence of fisheries we, here? We didn't find any fishing evidence. I mean, some of the spear points could have been used for, you know, jabbing. Yeah. We did find them with weak shoulders and the types of spear points that we think may have been more jabbing tools rather than, you know, hunting uh, spear points. So, but on the Merrimack River, there's a site called the Neville site, the type site for the point where they actually found a very high mercury count in soil samples, which, uh, which did suggest a lot of fish processing. And they did find fishing type tools, more fishing tools. During the late archaic, as I said, the sea level starts stabilizing. There's more sites that we find along the coast. We just find more sites in general. Late archaic, there's a population rise. And it also could be because it's more visible.